Lesson 13 is going to be about coordinate covalent bonds and resonance structures. So we're going to be identifying what they are, how to draw them, and we're going to go over the, briefly what resonance means. So coordinate covalent bonds are different from normal covalent bonds because both of the electrons that are shared by the bonded atoms originally came from the same atom. That may sound very confusing, but let's try this out. So the central atom gives a lone pair, two valence electrons, think of Mr. T, it's giving up a Mr. T to a positively charged source. So in the picture, we have water with its bonds. You're noticing that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around the oxygen. It's got two single bonds. It's got two lone pairs. And it'll be giving up one of those lone pairs to bind up to a hydrogen ion. That means it's just a proton to make what we call a hydronium ion. You're also noticing that the hydronium ion is in brackets with a charge because that means it's a polyatomic ion, which we use in ionic bonding. A polyatomic ion, such as NH4+, is a tightly bound group of atoms that is covalently bonded but has a positive unit and is used in ionic bonding as well. So to draw a Lewis dot diagram of the polyatomic ion, you must apply the idea of coordinate covalent bonds. So when we look at the ammonia molecule, which is NH3, you're noticing that you have one lone pair and you're going to be giving up that attraction to bind to one positive hydrogen ion. Thus, you got ammonium, which is NH4. That's how you go from NH3, which is neutral, to a positively charged NH4. Polyatomic ions are the products of coordinate covalent bonding. So we have some that are positive, some that are negative, the charges will actually be used to determine how many valence electrons we have in total. So if you have a positive number, that means you're going to be subtracting. And if you have a negative number, that means you're going to be adding to your total amount of valence electrons. So let's try this. Okay? The steps are very similar to what we were doing before for drawing the Lewis dot diagrams for covalent molecules. But instead, there's a little twist. So the first thing we have to do is determine the valence electrons in total. So we just add them all up, and then we either add or subtract the total electrons based on the charge. So let's start off with 26 valence electrons. Okay, 6 plus 6 plus 6 because you have 3 oxygen, 6, 12, 18. 18 plus 7 is going to be 25. And the addition of a negative 1 or the gaining of 1 makes 25 turn to 26. Divide that by 2 tells us we have 13 shared pairs. Number three says we have to determine the arrangement of atoms. If one element exists, it is the center. So therefore, chlorine is our center atom. It will also have three oxygens around it. Boom, boom, boom. Now we're going to be placing lone pairs on the terminal atoms. Okay, we're noticing one, two, three, four, five, and six of our shared pairs have been established. We need to add seven more. Okay. Continue placing lone pairs on the terminal atoms. Continue with making single bonds, then lone pairs until all the pairs have been used. So, your seventh is the bond between the oxygen and chlorine, eighth and ninth. So, we still need four more. Let's add in some lone pairs. And there we have them. Now, when we add all those lone pairs, and you start to count again, you will notice that they all contain the octet rule. So therefore, this is how you would draw a coordinate covalent bond. But we have to add the brackets and the negative one charge. And again, don't forget, those lone pairs mean that there could be no bonding in those locations. So SO2, when you start to draw it, because it has two terminal atoms that are the same, but one gets a single and one gets a double bond, you kind of get confused as to when to or where to put the double and single bonds. So you can draw them either way because we still end up with the valence electrons around each atom. This is what we call resonance structures. Alternate structures of a molecular compound doesn't change the properties. They're really just almost like mirror images of each other. Which simply means that they're the same thing. They could just be drawn two different ways. Right. Here are another couple of examples of resonance structures. So nitrate, 
Uh, as you can see in the top, there's different forms of drawing it. You could put the double bond in the top middle. You could put it to the left. You could put it to the right. They're still the same thing. On the bottom, you could see that ozone also has uh, resonant structures. It has two where you could put the double bond going to the left or the double bond going to the right. 